Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make my pasta sauce that I'm going to be making for my zucchini noodles that we're going to have tonight. I'm also going to make some regular noodles for the kids because they just do not enjoy the zucchini. But I think the zucchini actually has a lot more flavor and obviously it's way more healthier than regular pasta. So how you make the zucchini noodles, I'm not even going to really show you because it's so simple. All you do is take your zucchini and peel it with a peeler until you get thin little strips like this. And you want to peel it evenly all the way around until you get to the seeded part. Once you get to the seeded part, go ahead and throw that part in the trash. You don't want to use it because it's going to be very wet and messy. So I just put these off to the side until I'm ready to use them. Um, you can cook these in some water for like a minute in some boiling water, but they're really actually okay raw as well. Or you can actually cook them in a little bit of olive oil for like a minute just to get them a little bit toasty and firmer. Um, which is kind of how I prefer to do it. So that's what I'm going to do with them today. But you could definitely eat them raw with the hot sauce on top and it's really, really good. So how I make my sauce, what you're going to need is mushrooms. If you like them, you can leave them out if you don't. Um, crushed tomatoes. And I always buy the Sinto brand or San Marzano. Um, these are just really like the best in my opinion. And you want one large can. You're gonna need some garlic. I buy my garlic like this. It's already peeled and ready to go for me. And you're gonna use about four cloves of garlic and just chop it up. It can be rough, it doesn't have to be perfectly minced. And then the seasonings that I use is salt, basil, pepper, oregano, and that's basically it, but you can season it to taste and you can always use fresh herbs if you have them. In fact, that's probably preferable, but I don't have them today, so I'm gonna use the dried stuff. And then I'm using three sweet Italian chicken sausages, which is about three-fourths of a pound or almost a pound of chicken sausage. Now you could leave the sausage all together, but we're gonna have it in our dinner tonight. Now, if you take the sausage and the mushrooms out, I use everything else. I make the sauce and jar it in some uh, glass jars, the mason jars here. And it's good in the fridge for almost two weeks and it's great on pizzas or pastas or however you want to use marinara sauce so keep that in mind if you're a vegetarian you could definitely take this out you do not have to eat this you could add in any kind of veggies that you want but this is just how we prefer to eat it so that's how i'm going to make it so let's come on over here to the stove i like to use this big frying pan it's the green pan i don't know if you guys can see that from Target actually is what I bought it. I think you can get it at Walmart or wherever, but I like it because it's a ceramic bottom. It's really easy to clean and it's really, really big and heavy duty. So I like that a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on and get that going. And we're gonna put a couple tablespoons of olive oil into the bottom of the pan. I really like this olive oil from <coughs> Trader Joe's, it's this one here. You can get a giant bottle of it for like $5.99 or $6.99, which is like an amazing deal for olive oil. And I think it tastes pretty good. I've used it in like salad dressings and everything, and I like it. So we're going to do like, I don't know, two or three tablespoons of olive oil. I don't measure anything. You should know that about me now. So if you need exact, precise measurements, this is not the channel for you. But if you do need them, I'll try to kind of guesstimate how much I use. So this is like two to three tablespoons of olive oil in the bottom of the pan. And then you better go ahead and remove the casings from your meat and put the meat right into the pan. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I really should have brought my tripod for this. Sorry guys, but do the best we can. And all I did was just cut down the center and then the meat comes right out of the casing. So it's pretty easy to do. And you just throw the casing away, obviously. You don't wanna, don't wanna keep that. Bye casing. And this sauce is really, really yummy. You can cook it way ahead of time, like I said, and put it in the jars and then just pull it out when you wanna use it. It's really, really, really simple. It's really good frozen too. You can freeze it in just a regular Ziploc freezer bag. And it would keep in the freezer, I would say, for like six months probably. Or longer. As long as you packaged it pretty well. So, 
So I usually have two hands for this, but I did not bring my tripod today, so this is why I'm struggling a little bit, but it's almost done. I swear it's pretty simple to do this, even though I'm making it look really hard. Okay, casing off. And you can see you get quite a bit of meat out of these casing. Now, like I said, you could definitely leave this vegetarian, just use some mushrooms, some portobello mushrooms would be great in here. Um, any kind of protein base you could use. Okay, so I'm gonna take my meat right over and put it into the pan. And there we go. Ooh, okay, that's sizzling. That's what you want, guys. And then pan is heated, and get the sizzling action going on. So I'm just gonna rinse my hand off. Yeah. And then I'm going to go ahead and break that up. Does anybody else use that method soap? I love that soap. Actually, I like to use one clean cushion towel for my entire cooking process. So, and I just keep that up on my shoulder so I can wipe my hands as needed. I'm just going to grab a wooden spoon here. This one's good. And just break up your meat at the back of that wooden spoon. Gonna do is you're just gonna brown this. Now you could also add onion, you could add still made of nice green pepper, would be great. Um, yeah, this is just how I'm making it today, but it changes up our bowl as well. I could have onions, so maybe I'll take some of that around. The kids don't really love the onions so much. You know, you can't really like notice it's in there, but they somehow find it. So usually when I cook them for them, I don't add it in unless I really, really want to. Okay, so I'm going to let that kind of do its thing there in the pan. And while we're waiting, what I would do is chop the garlic, but I already have that chopped up because I knew I was going to be cooking for you guys today. And you can open up your can of tomatoes, get your seasonings ready, and get all prepped up. Now, I'm not going to cook my zucchini noodles yet. It's a little bit early for dinner, so I'm going to wait on those. I'll just pop those in the fridge for now and then come back to this later when I'm ready to cook dinner because they literally take a minute to cook. So the hard part is done, the peeling and everything, that's already done. Let's check out our meat now. Once you get it about halfway brown, you can go ahead and add in your mushroom. Now the mushrooms will take up some of this oil, so don't add any more and don't add any salt seasoning yet until your mushrooms start to break down a little bit. Yeah, so this is coming up to a brown pretty quickly. So I am going to add my mushrooms and let them start cooking. So what I do is I just push the meat kind of to the sides here. And then I grab those beautiful mushrooms and put them right in the center. Now, as you can see, I buy my mushrooms already cut. These are the baby Bella mushrooms. And you can buy them whole and rinse them and clean them and all of that yourself. But I like to cut corners around here because when you're cooking for kids, you got to use all the time you can. Save all the time you can. So we're gonna go ahead and stir these mushrooms up into the meat and let them break down. Once you start seeing them breaking down, then you can add in your garlic and the rest of the seasoning. So I'm gonna do that. Okay. Let's see what I'm doing here. You can already see this is gonna be a pretty hearty sauce. So I'm going to get the garlic ready because it's going to go in next. <laughs> I hope you guys can hear me over this. This is already cooking so good. Okay. Now 
And really, the soft roll gets no time to come down. It's like, we took it. Go ahead and get our other seasonings here. Okay. Ooh, hi. Yeah, I'm just going to that in. It's okay if it's a big chunk. It's going to cook down and it's going to be really tasty. So I'm going to get all of these. I really like garlic. You could use less garlic if you don't. I'm not a huge fan, but we really like it in this house. So putting it in. Okay. Go ahead and stir that in. It's okay, there's still some pieces that are all really cooked. That's okay, they will cook. They're going to cook the time. Okay. Ooh, no, it smells really good in here. Okay, next thing I add is the tomatoes, and then we're going to put the seasonings in on top of the tomato. So be careful when you do this. It does sizzle. It might splash up a little bit, so be very careful. You're going to put your whole can in. And you can see it's kind of chunky, so I like to buy the chunky style crushed tomatoes. But I also buy the regular just crushed. It's totally your preference, whatever you like. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and season it up. I'm going to put a little bit of salt, probably about a teaspoon or so. Not too much. Those tomatoes already have some salt in them. We're going to put some oregano. Okay. And some basil. I definitely would use fresh basil if you have it, but we're gonna use what we got today. And I like a lot of basil, so I'm really basiling it up over here. And last but not least, some pepper. I just have the powdery junk, but if you had the, cr the fresh cracked pepper, that would be so much better probably. Okay, and then you're just gonna stir this up. You can see that I did not drain anything. I like the flavor of all the juices, so I keep that in my sauce. You could definitely drain it if you want to watch the oil intake. So all you're going to do is stir this up really good, and you're going to let it cook on the stove for about 15 minutes, and then it's done. And it's ready to serve. So it will cook down, and it will be a beautiful deep red color when it's done. And then you can just put it right over some pasta, or some gnocchi or whatever you want to serve it on or just eat it with some bread like this it's really good i'm just breaking up those big chunks of meat getting everything combined and you can see this is beautiful okay so we're gonna let that simmer away for 15 minutes and it's gonna be so good and I'm going to go ahead and switch to a different wooden spoon as well, just to prevent cross-contamination, because I'm not going to stir this again for at least another five minutes, and all my meat will be cooked by then. So keep that in mind. You don't want to make yourself sick when you're using chicken or pork or whatever. So put that in the sink. And if you guys follow me on Snapchat, I will definitely be posting a video of the finished product of this on Snapchat. So check me out over there. And maybe even on Instagram. Check me out on Instagram too. My Silly Life Insta, My Silly Life Snap. So, hope you guys found this recipe helpful. Try it out. Let me know if you do. Let me know how you put your own spin on it. I would love to know and I would love to try your ideas. You can see this already looks amazing. It's gonna be so good. All right, have a good day, guys. Bye.